Deputy President of the ECOWAS Commission, Honorable Ministers of Health, representatives of international organizations, WHO, and other partners, distinguished, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, I wish to take the opportunity to warmly welcome all of you to this important emergency meeting which deals with the issue on how we can fight against the Ebola virus outbreak in our West African community as quickly and effectively as possible. I requested the President of the ECOWAS Commission to convene this emergency meeting so that we can update ourselves on the status of our efforts to stem the tide of this disease and to agree on uniform regional strategies for containing Ebola. We as a sub-region are confronted with a serious public health emergency that has already claimed precious human lives and is threatening to claim even more. Ebola has claimed the lives of doctors, nurses, and other health care workers and ordinary people in four countries within our sub-region. So far, more than 2,400 people are said to have been infected in four countries and more than 1,350 persons are said to have died. Behind these numbers and statistics are real human lives either suffering from or lives lost due to Ebola. An initial outbreak of Ebola in one country in the sub-region has quickly spread to other countries. A few days ago, it was alarmingly reported again that a new strain of the virus had also claimed the lives of two people in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Many of our citizens across West Africa have been alarmed and panicked, and rightly so. It is quite commendable to observe that governments in the sub-region have deployed significant skills and resources to help combat the spread of the virus. Ebola has stigmatized our countries, and we have no choice but to combine our resources and efforts to defeat it. Currently, in the sub-region, Ebola is officially recorded in four countries, and yet the entire West African community of 15 nations, and even Africa as a whole of 54 nations, has been stigmatized with the disease. This regrettable characterization is having adverse socio-economic consequences on our sub-region and our continent, and not just for the affected countries. Nations that depend on tourism that have registered no case of Ebola are suffering from cancellations of visits. Economic activity across our sub-region has been affected. I've had to explain to audiences during the recent U.S. Africa Leaders Summit that the Ebola outbreak, though serious as it is, does not affect the entire continent. And even in those nations that are affected, the disease is contained in specific areas, specific towns, cities, and villages. Yes, this is a serious crisis requiring our full attention vigilance and urgent response, and we will do everything to defeat this disease. I wish to com commend the governments of Guinea, Liberia, Sierra Leone, and Nigeria for the bold initiatives they are taking to fight the spread of the Ebola virus. We stand in solidarity and support with all the efforts they are making to win the battle against Ebola. At this critical period, the affected sister countries need our support and our solidarity. The spread of the virus within the sub-region must again remind us of the fierce agency to develop regional solutions to our common social problems. During the recent ECOWAS summit here in Accra, we, the West African leaders, unanimously set in motion 
initial plans to tackle the spread of Ebola. We made financial commitments in the fight against the disease. Since then, the international community has responded positively, especially the World Health Organization, the United Nations, the World Bank, and recently the African Development Bank. All these institutions have made significant pledges of resources in recognition and support of the efforts that the West African Health Organization and ECOWAS had initially taken. We must not rest until Ebola is completely defeated. And this is why your meeting here today is of great significance for me as the chair of ECOWAS. Although Ghana has not yet registered any case of Ebola, we have committed significant resources to scaling up our prevention strategies as well as acquiring the needed medical facilities if it becomes necessary for handling cases of Ebola. To protect our doctors, nurses, and other frontline health workers, we have procured 10,000 personal protective equipment for their use. We've also intensified our public education in collaboration with religious and traditional leaders, especially in raising awareness about the disease. We've requested educational institutions to provide Ebola preparedness plans as children are about to return to school this September. And government is helping all these stakeholders and groups where necessary with equipment and supplies. The Ghana Armed Forces are also playing instrumental roles in the construction of designated treatment and isolation centers as part of our preparedness plans. The outbreak of Ebola disease we are seeing in West Africa is not only unprecedented in its size and severity, but it also presents significant challenges in its complexity. Our subregion has a pretty high level of mobility across our borders. This is a situation that has the potential of making the disease spread faster and further. The main strategies that are usually effective in containing and eliminating the disease quickly are quarantine and isolation. These methods appear to be in conflict with many of our social and community practices, especially where nursing and caring for the sick is concerned. In the initial outbreak, stigma, lack of information, misinformation, and secrecy hampered our efforts to achieve early containment of the disease. In addition, cases of the disease have occurred in areas where cultural beliefs and practices, coupled with challenges in access to basic health services, makes this outbreak perhaps the biggest common public health challenge to face uh, echo, to face ECOWAS since our community was formed. I'm confident that working across borders and with strong political will, we can defeat this outbreak and save the lives of our people. We must rally all available resources to ensure that the integrity and functionality of our health systems are maintained. We must give the maximum support, resources, and motivation to our dedicated health professionals to boost their ability and readiness to deal with this disease. Some of our hardworking doctors, nurses, and other healthcare workers have already paid the ultimate price for their dedication to work. We must do more to recognize them and let our appreciation serve as a clear incentive for others who have chosen to stay the course. One of these dedicated heroines who gave her life in saving many others is Dr. Ameyo Stella Shade Adadevo of Nigeria. In a rather amazing but sad twist that shows that outbreaks of this kind do not respect boundaries, Dr. Adadevo may have been of Nigerian nationality, but from a family that has its roots in Ghana. In fact, she has Ghanaian relatives. She was one of the senior health professionals who attended to the Ebola-infected Liberian uh, 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 officer, Patrick Sawyer, who flew to Lagos and later died of the illness. Dr. Adadevo and her colleagues acted fast to place Mr. Sawyer in quarantine and resisted pressure to have him released from hospital, a situation that would have resulted in many others getting infected or even dying. Her wise and sacrificial action 
potentially save many lives. But sadly, but sadly, just like Mr. Sawyer, she too succumbed to the disease. She died trying to do what she loved most, saving lives, and may her soul rest in peace. An important part of this sad story is the need for all of us in West Africa to work harder and more diligently on our integration agenda. We see in this story of Ebola involving Nigeria, Liberia, and Ghana a need to be each other's keeper. And this we can do only if we openly acknowledge the extent to which our faiths, interests, and aspirations are intrinsically intertwined. This is why ECOWAS integration must not wait. This is why your meeting here today is so important. We must succeed in this fight against Ebola so that our success can honor the memory and exemplary professionalism of people like Dr. Stella Mayo. Ladies and gentlemen, when a health crisis like Ebola strikes, our scarce national resources become even more stretched to the point of potentially derailing our development agenda. The full economic and social consequences of this crisis are slowly unfolding before us. So even as our government strives to implement the best strategies for eliminating the disease, May I urge all our development partners to realize that Ebola is a threat to the whole human family. And the best way to fight its spread is for us to combine resources to confine and eliminate it. For your meeting here today as health ministers in the sub-region, our people expect nothing less than an enhanced comprehensive Ebola containment and prevention agenda with clearly defined strategies that will help curb the transmission of Ebola, minimize the disruptions of our development programs, and restore the confidence and dignity of our people. Our major expectation of this meeting is that you come out with a clear and measurable agenda for bringing this health crisis under control in the shortest possible time. We need your recommendations on how we could bring about an early end to this outbreak. Our disease surveillance systems must be thoroughly examined and primed to function effectively. All our governments must intensify the activation of the WHO guidelines, WHO guidelines on Ebola containment and make it a top priority in implementation. We must agree on a uniform screening procedure for passengers traveling across the sub-region. There is a need also for more health workers in the affected countries. This meeting should come out with strategies for recruiting health workers to assist the affected countries contain the disease. In the panic to prevent Ebola from spreading, some reactions are rather having a negative effect in isolating and ostracizing uh, uh, some affected countries and worsening the situation there, as said by the ECOWAS president. Some countries, um, informed, have placed a ban on vessels that call at the ports of affected countries and have placed a ban in allowing these vessels to enter their ports. I think this is negative. This is resulting in some shippers refusing to accept cargo destined for the affected countries. This combined with the cancellation of flights by many airlines to these areas is creating difficulty in getting vital supplies and personnel into the affected areas. We must implement containment measures, but we must not implement measures that isolate and ostracize the affected countries. Excessive restriction of travel and border closure will adversely affect the economies of the sub-region. It is instructive, and I was informed this morning, that some of our health ministers from the affected countries are not able to join us because there are simply no flights to bring them to Accra. An African proverb says, when your neighbor's house is on fire, 
you must go and help him to quench it. Because after it has consumed his house, it will spread to yours next. We must therefore work with our sister nations affected by Ebola to overcome this disease. In this regard, I have tasked the Ghana Armed Forces to cooperate with WHO, MSF, WAHO, CDC, and other international medical organizations to provide a staging post here in Accra for getting vital supplies and personnel into the affected countries. It is my belief that as we try to find a way out of this crisis, we should consider the urgent need to build and strengthen all appropriate health infrastructure in our various countries. We must also consider the possibility of developing specialized centers for handling cases of this nature in the future. I urge you all to ensure that infection control practices in our health facilities in the sub-region are immediately reviewed and scaled up. I'm encouraged by the fact that in the past, outbreaks transmissions of the Ebola virus in the healthcare setting ended after the virus was identified and measures for infection control were put in place. I believe that the question of why our healthcare workers became victims to the virus must also be answered. From our quick actions following this meeting, it is my belief that no more health workers should die of Ebola if we take the appropriate uh, precaution. Invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, as we rally together to review our plans and strategies in addressing this outbreak, let us also be aware that preventive efforts will remain supreme. Standard measures like early detection, isolation of cases, contact tracing, and monitoring rigorous procedures for infection control have succeeded in ending previous Ebola outbreaks. These should therefore be our first lines of defense and attack in combating this disease. The primary source of infection is said to come from wild animals, and bats are identified as having a primary reservoir of some of these viruses. It may be necessary for our people to place a moratorium on consumption of some of these wild animals in order not to uh, create further outbreaks of Ebola. Following your meeting, if there is a need to call an emergency meeting of the authorities of heads of state to endorse certain decisions or recommendations that you might make, as chairman, I am willing to call such a meeting. I'm confident that this Ebola outbreak will be contained. And may our West African community be more united as we work together to combat this disease. And may success crown our efforts. I thank you all very much for your kind attention.